my granny's, Abner. I believe that's our ring. I had no good lum. I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skimp's friend, contractor Gregory W. W. Dobbs, made a quick visit to Pine Ridge the other day, approved Mousy's plans for the Wonderful World Apartments, and secured a check from Lum and Abner for $1,200 to purchase lumber. However, in the excitement, Abner made a mistake and signed a blotter instead of the check. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot down store on library. Uh, Lum is pretty much disgusted over the inconvenience Abner has caused by failing to sign the check properly. Listen. Well, Mr. Dobbs has surely cashed a check, Lum, or we would have heard from him by this time. Jeez, I hope so. What I'm feared of, though, is... He buys some lumber at that check, and when the lumber company takes the check to the bank, the bank will turn it down because your name ain't on it. It will, huh? Well, sure. That money was put in a joint account for me and you both got to sign the checks before they'll cash them. Well, I'm sorry I signed that blotter instead of the check, but he's just a smoky in here. I couldn't see nothing on And is if Mr. Dobbs is embarrassed by having that check come back, he might not want to have anything to do with helping us build our wonderful world apartments. Well, don't Squire know where to locate him? Tell him to bring the check back. I'll sign it. The trouble is, I can't locate Squire. Oh? Huh? His woman says he left with Mr. Dobbs and ain't been back since. Ain't, huh? They're more than likely someplace working on the plans. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I just hope I ain't spoiled everything first. Hi, doggies. Wait a minute. Who's that coming in yonder? Huh? Look there. I never have saw him before, have you? No, I ain't. Must be a stranger in town. Yeah. More than likely a drummer. Just about. Yeah. Just about. I don't want to buy nothing, I know that. No, no, no. Curious looking sort of a fella. Look at them horn rim spectacles. <laughs> Dog, it ought to get me a pair of them, you know it. Who said he's carrying there? Oh, reckon six samples or some kind, or a briefcase, something like that. Yeah, yeah, he's a drummer, that's what he is. Ain't no doubts about it. Now, reckon what he's got in there wants to sell. I don't know. We'll soon find out. <clears throat> Mine out. Oh. Well, how do you do, sir? What can we do for you? Uh, how do you do? <laughs> My name is Tiffin, uh, J. Wadsworth Tiffin, and I'm trying to locate a Mr. Lem Edwards. Lem Edwards? Uh, yes, sir. I was informed that he was one of the owners of this store. Oh, I reckon that must be me. <laughs> you got the name wrong, though. It's Lum Edwards. Lum? Why, that's an odd name. It's short for Columbus. Abner, yes, sir. Well, oh. Mr. Edgars, I would like very much to shake your hand. You are positively and without a doubt a genius. That's what you are, a genius among modern building engineers. A genius? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go so first to say that, Mr. Tiffin. Hardly. Not quite that far, anyway. Uh, Mr. Tiffin, you weren't sent over here by Squire Skimp, was you? Squire Skimp? Why, uh, who's he? See there, you don't even know him, Abner. Oh, uh, go yeah. on, Mr. Tiffin. Uh, what was you saying? Well, you see, it's this way, Mr. Irwin. Edwards. I, oh, yes, yes. Pardon me, Edwards. I never can remember a name, but I always forget a face. You see, I heard about your amazing apartment building plan a short time ago, and Well, I... how'd you hear about it, Mr. Tiffin? Well, that's a very complicated story. You see, Fred Butler runs a service station in Dubuque. Uh, that's where I live, Dubuque. And Fred heard it from his cousin, Orville Butler. You know, Orville Butler married one of the Salisbury girls. She was the oldest one, I believe. Or No, no, no. I think she was the youngest. No, well, anyway, she heard it from her uncle, who married a second cousin of a Pine Ridge girl, uh, Mrs. Bleven. I think that was the name. Oh, that, it must be Mrs. Blevin. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's just about who it is, Mrs. Blevin. She does have a relay up in Iowa somewhere. That Dubuque, I believe, is the name she called it. Yeah, yeah I've heard Miss Blevins mention her. Writes her letters all the time. Oh, well, uh, who did you hear it from, Mr. Tiffin? Fred Butler? Well, no, no, I forget where I did hear it now, but oh, no matter. The point is that I am here to make you a very attractive offer. Make me an offer? Yes, indeed. I don't know whether you realize it or not, Mr. Elwood, but you have hit upon an idea that might solve all the housing problems of this country, and we, we want to buy that idea. Who's we? Yeah. Well, I am the Iowa representative of the Orkney Building Corporation of Chicago. Oh. Yes, indeed. I've been with the company for years. But uh, the point is, we would like to secure your secret method for prefabrication. Prefabrication? Well, whatever it is that enables you to build 25 or 30 apartment houses on an investment of only $10,000. 
You see, with your secret, my company can secure contracts for more government housing projects than we can possibly handle. And that's why I'm here with this certified check for $50,000. $50,000? Oh, now, be reasonable, Mr. Egbert. After all, that's all the higher we can go. You must realize that your formula is still in its experimental stage. Well, never meant it weren't enough. I just never realized the idea was worth that much money. Well, uh, we are probably being a little too generous, but then the Orkney Corporation has always had a reputation for fair play. Well, is it a deal, Mr. Elbert? Eddard. I, I mean, Eddard. Uh, is it a deal? Well, uh... As far as I'm concerned, it is, but I'll have to get in touch with Mousy first. Mousy? Yeah, Mousy Gray. He's sort of in on this idea, too. Yeah, uh, fact is, he, he was the one that studied it up. I well, said. he did study some of it up. Oh, yeah. Under my direction, of course. Hmm. Abner, call over to Dick Huddleston's store. I seen Mousy go in there just a little bit ago. See if you can get him over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll see if he's still there. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, will it take very long to get a hold of this uh, Mousy person? Oh, no, it's just across the street there. Just take him a second to get over here. Oh, he's still there. Fine. Hello? Is that you, Dick? Huh? Oh, <laughs> well, Mousy, what are you doing answering the phone over there? I never knowed your voice. You yeah? there? Well, uh, when did you start? Hurry up, Abner. Uh, tell him to come over here right away. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, good for you. I don't think he can, Mom. He just started working over there. Working over there? Yeah, he's yeah, working over at Dick's store. Well, tell him to come on over here anyway. Yeah. Uh, say, Mousy, can, can you get over to the store here for a few minutes? Can't leave, huh? Tell him he's got to leave. Tell uh-huh. him we got the greatest news for him he's ever here. Yeah, just a minute, Mousy. Tell him what, Mom? Tell him we got the greatest news for him he ever here. Yeah, well, well, Mousy, you got to come on over here. We got the greatest news for you ever here. That'll get him. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. But, well, Mom, he says he can't leave on account of he's working well, there. tell him to quit his job, then. Well, quit your job, Mousy, and get on over here. Tell him what I got to tell him is worth a hundred jobs like that. Yeah, uh, Mousy, uh, Mom's got something to tell you it's worth a hundred jobs like that, and you got, he said. <laughs> he will. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah, right away, yeah. yeah. Well, hurry up now. Get on over here. All right, Mousy. Yeah, huh? Yeah, well, just come on over, lock the door up. We'll explain it to Dick. Yeah, all right. Goodbye. He's going to quit his job. Just lock the door up and come over here, he said. <laughs> Very good. Uh, he'll be over here in just a minute, Mr. Tiffin. Oh, then we'll close the deal. Fine, fine. Uh, uh, tell me, how did you happen to hit upon this amazing construction secret, Mr. Everett? Edwards. I mean, Edwards. Uh, what uh, special materials do you use? Oh, no special ones. It's don't matter what materials we make the buildings out of. Oh, it doesn't? Well, then, how in the world do you arrive at such a low construction cost? Oh, well, that's easy to explain. See, here's how it works. See, we take the $10,000 that Diogenes left. Uh, Diogenes? Uh, who, may I ask, is uh, Diogenes? Oh, he's a fellow that, well, he left town a short while ago, but before he did, he gave Pine Ridge $10,000 to be spent in uh, some way that would do the most good for the whole community. Yeah, he turned out to be a good man, Dodge, and he's dead. Oh, well, uh, I don't understand any of this, but uh, go on with the construction formula. Well, we take the money and build one apartment house. One? I thought you could build 30. Well, you can. I'm coming to that. See, 20 families move into this first apartment house. Yes. Over 20. And they can live in it free for the rest of their lives. All they got to do is turn in their old houses to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, go on. And then we take these houses and sell them for just a thousand dollars a piece. That gives us twice what we started with, or twenty thousand dollars. So then we can build two apartment houses with that. You, you following me? Uh, yes. Uh, go on. And then forty families move into these two new apartments and turn in their old houses. And so on. See, we keep getting in twice as much money from selling the old houses and building twice as many new apartments till we got enough for the whole community. <laughs> but this is this is amazing. And, and on top of that, according to the figures we got figured out, we end up with a profit of three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Now, yes. what do you think of that, Mister Tiffin? Well, Mister Edmund, I have never heard such a logical-sounding crackpot idea in all my life. Huh. Crackpot? Why, certainly it's crackpot. Why don't you see? If all the people are moving into the apartments, who are you going to sell all the old houses to? Why are we selling them to you? Huh? 
Uh, Doggy, that's right, Mom. There won't be nobody left to buy them. Oh, my, my. Well, good day, Mr. Almond. I'm very sorry I wasted so much of your valuable time. Oh, my goodness. I've been with a company for years, and I had to fall to a thing like this. Well, yeah, I'll be John Brown. Huh. And he's our to be bored for the simples. Why didn't I think of that? Well, are we going ahead and build apartment buildings or not, Long? Of course we ain't. God, he won't work. You heard him. Yeah. Well, what about that check we give Mr. Dog? Oh, my goodness. I forgot about that. $1,200 check. Yeah, what if he's went ahead and bought $1,200 worth of lumber, and now we ain't going to build the apartment? Oh, my goodness. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Mousy. Granny, we got to find that fellow Dobbs and do it quick. Well, howdy, Mousy. Come in. Mm. Well, hello, Abner. Long. Well, what's the good news? Good news? Yes, sir. What was it you wanted to tell me, Long? Oh, uh, Mousy? Yes, sir. I called you over here to tell you. Yes, sir. You're a crackpot. Mm-hmm.